I'm Nick and this is the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Stealth Ice. It's a new back connector board that we saw at Computex. What we're going to do is take a little bit of a look at this interesting new motherboard from Gigabyte. It's got connectors on the back. Let's take a closer look. Whoa. It's on the back. On the back. Yeah, Gigabyte was the first to do it. People just forgot. Alrighty, here it is. The Gigabyte X870 Aorus Stealth Ice in its fancy new packaging. We actually talked a little bit about this at Computex. They're trying to make the unboxing experience kind of like an experience, if that makes sense. It's uh, pretty fancy, if I'm being honest. It's got an inlay with that Aorus badge, but to see what this motherboard comes with, we need to get it out of the way. And spoiler alert, ladies and gents, there isn't that much that comes with these new motherboards. They've really stripped back all of the inclusions for these boards. It is what it is and times are changing. You pay more and you get less, which kind of leads us into the first thing. We've got a bunch of documentation. It's a bunch of stickers, a warranty card, and basically everything that is printed that comes with a motherboard. Next up, we've got the little G connector. This is for cases that don't have combined power lights and power switches and for cases that have individual wiring. Most cases these days do have a combined connector, but this is just a nice to have, just in case it's difficult for you to build. It makes life a lot easier. There's also a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. One theme that you'll begin to notice with this board is absolutely everything is white including almost all the components on the board itself. There's also a set of rubber isolation pads. And finally, the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. But let's unsheath the new X870 Aorus Stealth Eye so we can take a bit of a look at all of the things that come on this brand new board from Gigabyte. And I gotta say, it's a bit of a looker. First of all, we've got the front panel connectors for all the lights and all the switches. There's two PWM fan headers. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid coolers and RGB controllers and all that jazz. There's a TPM header. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's an LED demo header, which we typically use to light the board up with a USB power bank, as well as the front panel audio header. There's a front panel five gigabit USB header. There's a PWM fan header, two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives, two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's also two PWM fan headers. There's two sensor headers for things like thermal probes and whatnot. There's a 24 pin power connector, as well as another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. Along the top edge, there's three more PWM fan headers for your CPU fan and your liquid cooler and all that jazz, as well as a four pin EPS power connector and an eight pin EPS power connector. One thing you will notice is with Gigabyte's back connect motherboards, they typically use less EPS power connectors than their front connector counterparts. On the top side of the board, there is a debug LED screen as well as a Q flash button, a power button and a reset button. And if you look a little bit closer, there's also an LED array for postcode diagnostics. This just makes your life a little bit easier if you're having troubles with your system. There's two PCIe slots on the X870 Aura Stealth Ice. There's a full by 16 PCIe Gen 5 slot. Then there's a by 16 sized slot down the bottom, which is actually a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slot. There's also a quick release button to open up the top PCIe slot in case you wanted to pull out your graphics card. It does make your life a lot easier. As for the VRM layout, this board features a 16 plus two plus two phase VRM layout with the 16 phases being an eight plus eight parallel layout with 80 amp power stages. The cooling for this VRM layout is pretty extreme. There's also a heat pipe that connects both of the massive heat sinks together for optimal cooling. This board is an AM5 board, so it features AMD's AM5 socket or LGA1718. It also has standard AM5 cooler mounting. This is also compatible with most AM4 coolers as well. Let's do our usual thing here, guys. I wanna pop the socket open. This is for people 
who have never seen inside of a socket, you may be building for your first time and you want to know what it looks like inside an AM5 socket. I typically do this to save you the heartache and just to show you what it's like when you're just about to drop a CPU in the socket. For memory, the X870 Aorus Stealth Ice will support up to four DDR5 DIMM modules, up to 256 gigs in total at 8200 mega transfers. Keep in mind, this is the specification not the recommendation. There's a whole bunch of M.2 storage on this board. Let's pull the heat sinks off so you can get a closer look at the M.2 slots on this board. There are four in total, and all of the M.2 slots on this board are completely toolless. Gone are the days of M.2 screws. There's a PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot. There's two PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. The PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots on this board say Gen 5 on the top to make it easier to identify them. There's three slots at the top of the board and then there's one slot that is rotated towards the bottom of the board above the bottom PCIe slot. As for the rear IO, we've got a whole stack of USB 3.2 ports. We've got an HDMI 2.1 port, four USB 2.0 ports. There's two USB 4 ports with DisplayPort Alt. This will also work with Thunderbolt devices too. There's five gigabit ethernet. There's a regular USB type C 10 gig port, as well as the new antenna connector for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. There's a line out jack, a microphone in jack and SPDIF slash optical output. As for the talking, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna show you some B-roll. enjoyed taking a little bit of a look at this new board from Gigabyte. It's always good to get our hands on this in the studio so we can dive in and take a bit of a closer look. When we do show coverage, it is a little bit hard to see what all of the nuances are with these type of boards. One thing I will mention is something that I noticed with the B650E Stealth Ice was the EPS power connectors. I'm finding that with Gigabyte boards, all of the EPS power connectors are not eight plus eight, it's either just eight or eight plus four. I wonder what the reasoning is behind that. Maybe it's to do with fitment, but most of the time a regular eight pin EPS power connector is more than enough. Sometimes it's a little bit overkill to have too much EPS power. In terms of the VRM layout, it's got a 16 plus two plus two phase VRM layout. However, be aware that the VRM, well, the 16 phase part of it is an eight plus eight configuration. They're just calling it a 16 phase because it's a twin VRM layout. We do see this quite often now, but at the end of the day, it's not going to impact you given the efficiency of Ryzen 7000, 8000 and 9000 processors. I'll go as far as saying that this board will probably work with AMD Epic CPUs. We have seen compatibility with the 4004 and probably 4005 chips will work with this too. Just in case you were wondering, another thing we're seeing with back connector boards is on the surface of the board, we're getting some space back. And I think this board is kind of leaning into that, but what I would like to see is maybe using this for an additional M.2 slot. It's big enough and you could put a heat sink there. Basically all this is, is to cover up the uh, back of the 24 pin power connectors. But yeah, you could, they could do it. They could do it. They could do like MSI with anti-stabby technology. So then there's no raised pins on the back and then they could make it flush and then put another M.2 slot in. I mean, I don't design motherboards, so I don't know how all of the circuits would work for that, but I'm guessing it would be possible. Maybe you should. They have done motherboards with M.2 slots there before, so it's quite possible that they could do that. I love this heatsink design that we're seeing basically everyone do now. 
completely toolless. It just, I mean, awkward angles and I mean, that's there stopping it, but you know what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> These toolless heat sinks and drive insulation, it's just awesome. As well as that, it does have that thing that we've seen with all of the boards now with a quick release and get in there, mate. This also has a quick release top PCIe slot as well. We're seeing this basically with every board, except ASUS has kind of wound that back, not really doing that anymore. I wonder why. They did have a pretty cooked mechanism but why is ASUS stopped? I don't know, ASUS is a funny one. And if you're interested in the pricing, the X870 Aura Stealth Ice is probably gonna be going for around about 310 US dollars or around about 599 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. With saying that, this board is available in Australia already. I'm not sure about other regions, but you can walk into basically any reseller or retailer and buy it or buy it online. Yeah, there is that. Let us know your thoughts on this board. Let us know what you think about back connector motherboards. Me personally, when we're doing case reviews and the case supports back connector boards, I typically like to use them. Not only does it make it easier to build, but it also shows you that compatibility. And now that we're seeing basically ubiquitous adoption of back connector boards across the board, it's good to test the compatibility because with cases like stuff we've seen from Corsair, there has been some issues with the 24 pin power connector and being able to unplug cables, not plug them in, but pull them out if need be. Yeah. What else? Is that it?